What if the apartment you moved into had unsettling symbols carved into the closet? Have you ever witnessed a shadow figure in your home? And can shadow figures invade dreams? Today, we test the believability of the Los Angeles shadow figure. Welcome to Believe in the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. That is right. It's another Tuesday. I'm back in Ohio. Dude, I, so have you been to, you've been to Atlanta? Yeah, I have. Me too. Briefly. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Savannah? No, I've never been to Savannah. No, it's it it was it was all right. It was warm, warmer than Ohio. Dude, I would live in Decatur. Decatur, Georgia? Decanter. <laughs> Decatur. No, dude, it is such a cool little downtown area. I had some great coffee there. I walked around. COVID doesn't exist in Georgia. Well, <laughs> I do want. I do want to visit Savannah and go on like a tour, ghost tour sometime. Yeah, dude, let's go to Savannah That'd for real. It, it's it's very cool. We've got so many places to go that we've made ourselves like a list for. I know, I, but we actually don't have a list. Our list is re-listening to these episodes and trying to figure out where we have to go. That is true. I, dude, I thought my... St- quick, quick story before we jump into this. I thought my stomach was going to get destroyed because... So we went to this like little downtown diner in Atlanta and they had a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich. And, and I'm, I, I think... I don't know how overtly I've mentioned this before, but I'm, veg- I'm vegetarian and I haven't eaten meat in over a year. So I make this big to-do. I'm like, can I add, can I get no bacon on this? And I'm like, I don't want to offend you, but there's certain places like Applebee's where I don't feel comfortable asking to take meat off because I feel like it's frozen. So I made this big to-do. And Lady's like, oh, so you just want like an egg and cheese sandwich. I was like, yes. <laughs> so you know that bitch had bacon on it, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And bacon's like one of those meats that like seeps in with like the grease. But I was so hungry that I just took it off and ate it. And my stomach is notorious for being you know, weak. Yeah, weak boy. Yeah, but I handled it like a champ. That's good. My house got hit by a car. Yeah, yes. And you're okay. Everything's fine. It's actually all fixed now. We're all your, good. Your porch, it was like <laughs> with like a word if you're saying everything's all right. Yeah, it's all I mean, good so now. So there's a car malfunction. Well, <laughs> they said, uh, whatever. I didn't uh, push it. They yeah. fixed it. It's all good. Yes. But anyway, it is listener submission time again. So once again, I want to say, if you want to submit your story, head to believingthebizarre.com, submit your experience and let us know. And two, if you already have, and you're like, when are they going to get to it? We will. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're there. We're getting to them. So without further ado, any other Atlanta stories, let's jump into... The Los Angeles shadow figure. So this experience comes to us from Georgie, who I I must say is easily one of our top supporters and listeners. Absolutely. Like, I almost feel like I know this person. Yeah. So we appreciate you, Georgie. Thank you for always sharing your story about listening and everything like that. We appreciate the support and you're awesome. And you get to live in LA. So that's cool. It's one of my favorite places. Of all time, You've actually. been to L.A.? Uh, I've been to L.A. a couple times. Have you been to where she lives in this apartment and all the spooky stuff that's about to happen? I'm going to go with probably not. Okay. So, like we said, this story takes place in L.A., LeBron's new home, temporarily. <laughs> that's right. I, for- I forgot. Right? It's only been like three years. And uh, Georgia used to live in an apartment in East L.A. with her father, her aunt, and her grandmother. And this whole experience takes place in 2006. So during these experiences, Georgie was just seven years old, and she mentioned in her note that her father was still pretty young at the time, too, like just, you know, younger, mid-20s. So I figured it was nice having the assistance of uh, her aunt and her grandmother to help raise Georgie. And that's me speculating. She didn't really say anything like that, but I just imagine that it helps. But also, they're living in L.A., so I imagine if her dad, her aunt, and her grandmother were all lawyers, and they all put their money together... That's how they'd be able to afford a four bedroom yeah, apartment. Probably, yeah, probably. Yeah, feels Angeles. like. Uh, yeah, they're all high paying attorneys, and they're they're doing their best. I know, they're do they're doing what they can do, man. I feel like I'm closer to Georgie's dad's age than I am Georgie, and that's weird. <laughs> well, I was like, yes. fifteen. Y- yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was six, so yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Georgie, put your dad on the. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> yeah, talking. Is to your him. dad there? Can we talk to him, please? <laughs> oh man. 
So they're apartment hunting in East LA, and they found a new place to move into that could fit all of them. However, before officially moving in, Georgie's grandmother, who is astutely observant, noticed a few things that were odd in one of the apartment's bedrooms. First, there was a dark, circular stain on the floor. And not only that, the stain appeared to have drag marks that led to the closet. Now, I don't know if this is like moving furniture drag marks or if it's like nails, like somebody you're getting pulled in a horror movie and you break a nail, like the ring, and then you wince. You know what I'm talking about? Man. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, you know what that reminds me of, though? It reminds me of um the OU episode, right? With the stain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they touch it, and then <laughs> bad juju. Yeah, bad stuff happens. So Georgie's father followed the drag marks to the closet, peered inside, and discovered what he initially stated looked like satanic markings. Now, that wasn't completely described, so we're taking his word for it. And obviously, Georgie was six at the time, so it's not like she could be, well, it kind of, you know, looked like this. It's a rough sketch. So <laughs> it, it's kind of going based off of her dad, but we're now speaking to her dad, so... <laughs> Is this before they put the down payment down, or, like... the uh, I don't for know. the apartment, or, like, are they already locked in? I like, don't think... I don't think they're already locked in, but I think mm. they probably are weighing their options, and... It's still looking the best. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's still looking the best. Well, clearly, we have a story here. That's not... Thanks for listening. So they said, (laughs) that. Yeah, right? No, thank you. It was a spacious closet, but we're good. So the satanic symbols weren't enough to drive them out of the apartment yet. So it must have been, like, a really good deal. Well, the the landlord tried to downplay it. He said it was just some kids that were playing around in there. So it's no big deal. He said, MBD... No, she was seven. It happened in 2006, but she was seven years old. So you know what? At seven years old, maybe she does know what the satanic mark looks like. (laughs) That one year of age difference, I feel like, really makes a difference. I remember a lot of children's programming devoted to seven-year-olds, and it told them how to draw satanic symbols. Yeah, you just do, like, the the metal, like, the, you know, rock on. Yeah. Very Jack Black-like. But on the for real, the the owner, the landlord, so so to speak, did say that he would get it fixed. Don't know if he did. How's he going to get it fixed? Is he going to call a priest? Like, what do you mean? No, he was going to, like, paint over Oh, it. okay, he's going to paint over the St. Mark's. Yeah. Gotcha. And that specific bedroom with the markings would end up being Georgie's father's room. So while the weird markings and the stain obviously caught Georgie's dad and Anne off guard, it made the strongest impact on her grandmother, who was also the person that noticed it first. Because she had a really uneasy feeling, and she was questioning, like you, whether or not they should even move in. But her dad talked the grandmother down and insisted that the apartment would be okay. And anyways, it was just going to be a temporary apartment until they found something better. Mm, That feels like a horror movie. Or until they leveled up to like paralegal or like like the best personal injury attorney in in East LA. So I don't know how much, maybe for all you visual learners out there who are listening to an auditory platform. It's me. You're a visual learner? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a tactile i have to do it i gotta do it to to learn it if you have a sketch pad out if you want to kind of get an idea of what the apartment looked like she kind of broke it down so i'll give it to you to since she gave it to me so it's kind of like a backwards l she said with the living room on the left and then a big kitchen to the right you know what now that i'm reading that that's totally why they went for it the big kitchen right isn't that like that's the selling point the kitchen absolutely it's like yeah there's a satanic marks and demons in the bedroom but this island (laughs) Oh, is that granite? It is. <laughs> and so the kitchen, the big kitchen is next to the dad's room. And then if you go up a little bit across from that, it's kind of like a hallway with the grandmother's room. And then down the hall further is Georgie's room across from a bathroom. And she said there's also a backyard, which I imagine that's also a big selling point in LA, but I don't know because I've never been. All right. So let's shift from HGTV to um the travel channel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and let's talk about some spooky shit so everything was calm at first when the four of them moved in but shortly after settling down georgie's dad would hear something strange while laying in his bed at night he started hearing people whispering in his bedroom doorway and it was too quiet to actually decipher what they were saying but he was sure that he was hearing voices this is not a fun apartment to have. What are you doing? I don't know. And then the other one's like, but it does it have does a backyard. Back, 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 back. <laughs> Ooh, good, good property value. Location. 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 <laughs> but he wasn't immediately alarmed 
and he always kept his doorway open because apparently Georgie tended to sleepwalk and sleep talk. And his doorway led directly to the hall in Georgie's room. So if she were to sleepwalk and, you know, find herself in a predicament, he could see her. But the more he heard the voices and paid attention to his surroundings, it was clear that these voices were not coming from Georgie. They didn't belong to anybody living in the apartment. And this, this whispering escalated to different things shuffling around the kitchen at night, such as spoons and plates being moved. And then one night, Georgie's dad and grandmother awoke to the sound of ceramic plates shattering. And Georgie's a hard sleeper, so she didn't wake up to this. It was pretty much just that her dad and her grandmother don't know where the aunt's at. But they're completely freaked out, and they make their way to the kitchen, and obviously they see no sign of anybody there. They just see the smashed plates on the floor. So we got voices, we got noises, we got house items moving around, and this continued for a couple of weeks, actually, until her grandmother hit a breaking point. So... (laughs) I, I, I don't want to say this because this isn't my place to say this. So I'm going to say it in Georgie's words. Her grandmother did what any Mexican grandma would do. And uh, she went directly to the church. Okay. And she got some holy water to bless and drench the hell out of the apartment. And that was a line that she said that I really liked. So that's a quote. Yeah. Drench the hell out of the apartment. I like that. That was good stuff. That uh, So shout out to that. I mean, I feel like my mom would have done something very similar. with A bunch of holy water. Yeah. it's it, It's like when you're watching a scary movie and stuff happens, like... Obviously, it hasn't gotten, like, violent. Well, I guess smashing plates is kind of violent. Yeah, that's escalating. They're like, these suck. (laughs) I don't like these. Where's the fine china? You know, when you're watching a movie, you're like, why don't they just leave? But, I mean, there is a lot of stuff. Okay, like, I mean, you're a relatively new homeowner. And that's different than an apartment. But if you, which maybe you can tell that story sometime soon. (laughs) But if you, okay, if your house was overwhelmingly having paranormal stuff happen, such as voices, things moving, what would you do? Like, how would you just easily up and leave? You know what I mean? Like, there's so many logistics to it. When you're watching a movie or listening to a podcast and you're like, just go, bitch. I just got my porch fixed. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, you couldn't just uproot. I, like, I just moved in. I could, I couldn't do that. So you deal with it, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, They did the cleansing. And for a few days, everything was calm, everything was chill, and they sort of felt a relief. But then, the next week, Georgie's grandma woke to the sensation of being watched by someone. And as her eyes adjusted upon waking, she was terrified to see a tall, shadow figure peering into her room with one hand on the doorframe, leaning forward. So technically, this is the first time that anything had been seen. They'd been getting the items breaking, moving, and the voices. But now, for the first time, her grandmother actually saw this shadow entity peering into her room. The first time there's a visual. Yep. And that's... Ooh, that's creepy, though. So, okay. Can I, can I pause really quick? Yep. Can I ask you, Tyler, mm-hmm. what are you thinking about this? Like, do you have an opinion yet? Have you formed an opinion, like, while you were... Doing your research, did you start to form an opinion? Yeah. Um, well, no, I don't. I um, yes and no. Like <laughs> okay. At, at the at the end of this story, I did want to discuss what we think shadow figures are. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 I was just like curious because like it started for me thinking I was like, oh, that's a demon, but it doesn't. Mm, I don't want you to give anything away. But, see, but that's the thing. It's kind of like once. Okay. Yes, I know. Where you, I like where you're going. Let's talk about the story in full. Okay. And then we'll break down kind of what we might think it is because there's multiple things I think it could be. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting anxious. I'm just getting anxious. I like the story. It's interesting. Not done yet. Okay. Sit down. Buckle up. Okay. I have to go pee. All right. You go ahead. All right. Previously on the Los Angeles shadow figure. So her grandmother saw this creature, this entity, this black shadow figure peering in her doorframe. So she yells at it to go away and to leave them alone. And it, listen, it started backing away and it disappeared down the hall. But it was disappearing down the hall towards Georgie's room. (sighs) And fearing for Georgie's safety, her grandmother jolted out of bed and actually chased after the shadow figure. Oh my God. (laughs) I love these listener submissions where the people chase after the spooky things. I did too. Because I would never do that. No, absolutely not. So once she got by Georgie. <laughs> so once she got to Georgie's room, she looked inside, and sure enough, 
right there in the corner of Georgie's room was the shadow figure. Now, have you seen Insidious? Yes. The, the, when I was reading this, I got chills because it made me think of the moment where the mom of the main character is telling the story about how you, the thing used to haunt her son, yeah. Patrick Wilson, in, in baby form, and where it just like creaks and it points to the bed when she asks what it wants. Yeah. Which is right before the most terrifying jump scare where Darth Maul is behind Patrick yes. Wilson. But that's what this moment made me think of. It's like she's fearing for her child's life. She's telling it to go away. It retreats and she walks in and in the corner of the room of her granddaughter's bedroom, this shadow figure is just lurking. Ugh, I hate that. I hate it. So Georgie's dad heard the yelling and running and actually thought somebody broke into the house. You know, like a physical person. Yeah. Like not insidious. <laughs> so yes. he darted for Georgie's room as well. And just before he got there, Georgie's grandmother watched as the shadow figure sunk into the corner of the wall and just completely disappeared. Oh. It was gone. Oh, and gross. I don't like that at all. No, because it's like, is it really gone? Or is it now just, you know, I mean, it's like, like when you think of safety, there's like... It kind of reminds me when we were talking about skinwalkers and how when you're in a car and you're driving away, you get that sense of relief because you're like, you're getting farther away from something. But it's like when there's an entity like a shadow figure that you can't really comprehend how it works and it's your own home. You know what I mean? How do you ever actually know whether or not it's gone? Maybe there's a sense of relief. Like I feel like when people cleanse, they might get that sense of relief. I've never had to, th- thankfully, I've never had to do that in my life. Mm hmm. But I mean, I mean, for her grandmother to watch something disappear in her granddaughter's bedroom. I have a perfect analogy for this. Yeah, let's hear it. So when I was living with Alex, uh, we when we, we lived in that dorm room, my mom brought some sage water and she saged our whole, uh, our dorm, which took like five seconds because it was four feet by four feet. But you could almost feel an energy lift. Mm-hmm. And I, what does it feel like? It feels like a pressure that goes away. Like when you have to pee and then you pee. <laughs> There's no better instantaneous relief than emptying your bladder. Bladder relief? Yeah, I, I experienced that on the plane, and it was <laughs> remarkable. It's 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 like there's a pressure that you didn't know was there, and mm-hmm. when it's gone, you're like, oh, it's gone. Yeah, you you know, when I thought your bedroom had spooky stuff in it, it did feel very heavy, and it used to not feel heavy when I left it. So maybe it's like if you feel that everywhere in your house, and then it just, you I don't just know. become accustomed to it. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. Because I didn't feel it, but man, I was used to it. So, Georgie's dad did not see this entity. He got there after it disappeared, and he wasn't a big believer in the paranormal at the time. So, not that he was like traditional horror movie dad, where he's like, oh, suck it up. It was just somebody just left a, the window open, and it, it broke <laughs> all of our plates, and is whispering in my doorway. Uh, he, he wasn't like that. Because, yeah, I mean, he's he's young. He's trying to make things work for his family. He's got stuff going on. He's thinking about things. I like your stereotypical dad a lot. I... Dude, horror movie dads whoever screenwriters need to start like giving them a little more dads a little bit more credit because they're always like that they don't believe in anything it just God makes me it. think like um oh what is what's the one called the uh the, like the huge ghost series where it was like real life but not conjuring no worse oh the first one was really good though what are they called uh uh paranormal yeah paranormal activity yeah i'm i always, whenever i think of a traditional horror movie dad i always think of paranormal activity to two's dad oh he was great though I mean, he was entertaining. Yeah. So this happened. This occurred. This entity disappeared. And Georgie's grandmother's plan was pretty much to shield Georgie from all that was going on. So they don't trust that room anymore. They want to keep Georgie safe, but they also don't want to be like, hey, honey, sorry to wake you. There might be a demon in here. (laughs) You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, let's not tell her everything. Right. She's only seven. She's only seven years old. And so they actually convinced Georgie that all the noise and the commotion was scaring them, the grandmother and the aunt. So they asked Georgie if she would sleep with them because they were scared. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, okay. I got like, like reverse. Yeah. And and Georgie's probably like, shit, I gotta do everything right. Here. Fine. <laughs> Y'all pansies scared. But I mean, that's. That's like a type of motherly, grandmotherly love. You know what I mean? Like, and you know what I mean? Just like yeah. you're shielding her, making yourself look vulnerable for that peace of mind. I, I really respect that. It wasn't until Georgie got older, because, you know, it's not 2006 anymore. And she's, right. she's older now. That she found out what was really going on and that they really wanted to protect her from this shadow figure 
that was in her room. So shortly after all that happened, the whisperings came back and her dad started waking up with scratch marks on his back and on his chest, which was just completely unexplainable. And at this point, it was pretty much impossible for him to be a non-believer. I mean, his family's freaked out. He's hearing the whispering, the markings still, which I feel like is kind of forgotten. There's still the, the drag marks and the, and the satanic, whatever that might be, marking in the closet. And now he's getting scratch marks on his body. And another night, her dad woke up to see a tall, dark figure lurking next to Georgie's door and slowly making its way into the room. Oh, I don't like that either. That's like the same first guy. He rushed out of the bed and ran to Georgie's room while yelling for her aunt and grandma to wake up. And as he got closer and closer, he heard her crying and coughing. And he turned on the lights and... I don't know if he saw it before he turned on the lights or if the lights kind of caused it to disappear. But at that point, you know, he's probably in a panic. It was gone. So it was just him, lights on, and Georgie was crying and coughing. But she came too. And he asked Georgie if she was okay and why she was crying. And Georgie told him that she had a nightmare where she was all alone at a fair. And a man kept trying to take her hand, saying that she had to go with him. And as the dream intensified, she could hear her dad yelling out to her in the distance. But just as she finished telling him, she very oddly went back to sleep as if she hadn't been crying and hadn't been coughing. So it was, it, it was kind of like this strange, odd moment of just like telling her dad about this dream and then going to sleep as if it was not, I don't want to say not her, but it's like this experience only existed in her dream. If that makes sense. Like to Georgie, these were two separate things. Like the dream experience and then her telling her dad. It wasn't like a carryover effect of like something terrifying is happening. Right. But that's my interpretation. And I know we can get to this more in the discussion. But how does that feel for you just now hearing it? It sounds strange. It almost makes sense. It feels like an isolated incident. Yeah. And they're and they're ultra shielding her. So it's not like she's having experiences too. Right. You know, for her, this might be out of the blue, but it's just strange that she's crying. She's coughing. Her dad comes in. She tells him about this dream. And then it's just kind of like, okay, time to go back to bed. It's like kind of like a child innocence, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're, she's not drawing connections. She's not drawing dots or yeah. lines or anything like that. It's just kind of like, I don't know. There, there's, it, it's, it is odd. It is unusual. I feel like I, there's like, it's, I can't put my finger on how it makes me feel. Unsettled. Yeah. I think that's a good way of saying it. The way you describe the, the shadow figure itself, actually, I don't see a humanoid figure as much as I do, like, an exaggerated humanoid. Yeah. Like, I'm th like for me, it means it's just, like, this huge thing, long torso, super long arms. Now, that's just my mind. I know you're probably talking a more traditional kind of humanoid shadow figure, but that's how I see it. That's what I pictured until it got to the corner room, because then I... But... That's not what I initially pictured, like the, the insidious thing with the long fingers and the long arm pointing. Mm -hmm. That that was put entirely in my head from watching Insidious. Yeah. But w when I first started reading the story, I was picturing just a traditional shadow figure. So you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so things went even a step further. One morning, shortly after the dream incident, they noticed that Georgie's arm was red and it had marks on it as if somebody had hit her or aggressively held onto it. So she got an Indian burn? Yeah, it was... <laughs> Jeez, those hurt so bad. She, and she remembered it being really sore and convinced herself that maybe she had done it to herself in her sleep, but the mark that was on her arm was significantly bigger than her, her other hand. So, no, she, she did not do it to herself. And that was kind of like the breaking point, like the ultimate breaking point, because they went full paranormal movie and they just left well actually that's that, that's not what they do they stay and then so the, like the after the climax they're like yeah. all right we're out and this is kind of like the epilogue and okay so they they bounce after that they bounce they're like yeah we out we all out. right that's fair yep and I'm, I'm there might be a part two because i try to get a little bit more information about this from georgie because mm -hmm. they split up so the, the aunt and the grandmother went their way and she went with her dad okay and just leaving the apartment seemed to take care of the issue because remember there's you know the mark the stain but this might be more of a an attachment 
type thing, which makes me really kind of want to hear more about this. To who? The, her or the dad? The dad. Ooh. And I think, dad. see, I think the dad with her in proximity, like I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit, kind of like an overview, but it's, I think, I mean, the room was her dad's room. He mm-hmm. heard, he heard the voices first. So I don't know if this is an attachment to Georgie or it's just because she's in the same apartment as her dad who has the attachment. In my opinion, she's experiencing it secondhand. So she mentioned that the apartment that her and her dad moved into was a little bit smaller, more compact. Mm-hmm. So because it was smaller and there was less space to go, that it, the, the things that happened were more obvious. Like when things moved different noises because they were more of a a contained environment in the second apartment. It was more obvious to him. And they also saw the shadow figure more. So she didn't say this, but I'm also wondering if maybe her grandmother was kind of like, uh, I don't want to say like a beacon of light, you know, that's like a protection kind of agent. Yeah. Cause she was like the first one that sensed that something was wrong. So I'm kind of wondering if her grandmother was there, maybe it would still be happening but they wouldn't be seeing it more. You know what I mean? Things wouldn't be happening more. Because the way she explained it, it's actually like things heightened after they left and they went to the apartment by themselves. Oh, no. You never want that in epilogues. No. no. So it, it, <laughs> there's, no, there's no happy ending. But the good news is that her grandmother does make them always have holy water. And they had her grandmother come in and sage it. So she said it helps some... But her father still experiences a lot of nightmares. And she she pretty much feels like her father is still shielding her. Like he's not telling her everything he's seeing, dreaming, and experiencing. To kind of like, if you don't say it, it's not true. You know what I mean? Not giving it that power. Pretty much out of respect, love, and her own peace of mind. So that's her speculation. But that is the Los Angeles shadow figure. That is Georgie's story. And before we get to the discussion, like the discussion discussion, I do want to touch on two things. Okay, so the two things before we get to the discussion discussion, because, uh, so this is, the, I consider this the pre-discussion. Okay. Because we're going to be discussing things, uh, but not necessarily her story. Okay. All right, cool. Do you want more of a history thing, or do you want more of theoretical thing? Give me history first. All right, history first. Have you heard of the MS-13? Yes. Yeah. I I don't like talking about this for some reason. It, they're not like Slenderman. Like, the more you say it, they're not going to come here. No, the more you say it, they drive here and they kill us. Oh, well, ooh, I don't want I mean, we live in not Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> totally not Akron, Canton area. Yeah. Okay. So, j- uh, brief overview, because I don't want to get too far into this, because I feel like I'm speaking out of pocket, but gotcha. it, it, I looked it up, and this is, it kind of worked it's, it's a little bit. It's in pocket. It's in the pocket. If you say so. Okay. So, there's a gang that originated in Los Angeles in the 80s. And it's a Salvadoran gang. Basically, it was created so that people... It's from Salvador. El Salvador, is that? Yeah. El, did they put the L in front of it? or is it I just, believe so. Now this is where I get killed. Um, <laughs> but it was like a protection thing. It was like there's already so many gangs in LA that they pretty much created their own to protect themselves. Mm-hmm. But, then, but they're notoriously kind of known as one of the more violent ones. Yeah. And I read that they kind of started off as like... Uh, like metal heads and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But also, they're linked to satanic rituals. MS-13 is? Yeah. Oh. I don't... It, it's dwindled over the years. And it probably, to be honest, like if I'm going to... If I were to def- deflate this balloon right here, it's probably because they liked metal. Probably, you know, yeah. They did like the, you know, the rock on sign and they get like skull and crossbone tattoos and stuff like that. Yeah. So back in the 80s, they're like, oh, satanic stuff. Which, again, we're not saying... Well, you you know more about Satanism than I do. Yeah, what about it? Well, you defended it one time. Oh, like, I mean, like... Okay, so, like, Anton LaVey Satanism... Satanism? Satanism, yes. It's it's not really about worshipping Satan as much as it is opposing the traditional values of the church. Okay. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the people that like Satan. Okay, that's just not for, the same for thing. The, I, for right. I just... Yeah. You got, we got hit up, and people appreciate that you made that clarification. So, since we're speaking on it again, I wanted to, to give gotcha. you, to yeah, give you the floor Yeah, it's different again. stuff. Right. So, basically, this gang was attached to Satanism, and there was a popular death where there was like this 15... And they're also very young. They're mostly minors, apparently, which, remember, the landlord said it was just a bunch of kids. Oh, God, he did, mark. didn't he? Yeah. That's so, terrifying. I was reading the Washington Post, which is incredibly reliable. And they were talking about how 
these MS-13 gang members were being prosecuted and charged for killing this 15-year-old girl. Apparently, I don't know if she was hanging out, if they had her hostage, but they had a satanic shrine, and she made, like, an obscene gesture towards the shrine. So, at, like, point-blank range, they put one bullet in her forehead and one in her chest. I, I don't know the order. Uh, pro- probably chest head, but it. Probably, but, but I feel but... like your arm goes down. I feel like... I've never shot somebody, but I imagine it, um, I would... Go top to bottom, but for her sake, I hope it's the head first. That's yeah, I but I, I they probably did it chest head then. But then before that happened, I guess the guy went to like offer it a cigarette, the shrine, like an offering to. But when he was being prosecuted, he said that it didn't want a materialistic object; it wanted a soul. Okay, so like sometimes when I'm craving pasta, rice won't cut it. Yeah, you, you need that that good bow tie. Gotcha. That rotini. <laughs> that penne. But yeah, so and that's just one of a couple examples I saw. I don't like obviously this this episode's not about street gangs in LA. <laughs> right, no, no. But the, I mean, okay, but the dots I'm trying to connect. LA Satanism, young kids. That I don't think that necessarily fits with what the family experienced. I'm just saying that could be the origin of the markings and the, the the marks on the ground. No, I absolutely see that what you're trying to yeah, put and, out here. And, and could it be kids that didn't mean anything by it that were listening to him in 2006 and were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah he was, he, they were around in 2006. Yeah, sure. Maybe it was that. I'm just saying, I was trying to find ties to Satanism in LA and this gang was like one of the things I saw. And I was like, yeah, oh, absolutely. Interesting. So that, that's the history lesson. That's, I try and make history fun around here. So now let's talk theoretical before we get to the actual discussion. Because we've talked about shadow people before, and I don't think we actually discussed what we thought they were. I don't think so. And and I don't have an answer. So this is completely open-ended before we actually talk about what we think about Jordy's story. But I saw one where it was like, okay, it could be demonic, it could be extraterrestrial. But what do you think about the idea of them being from this earth, but being interdimensional? So they're not aliens, they're not ghosts or demons, they're something else, and they're here, but they can shift through dimensions, like how they kind of seep through the walls and things like that, and they're always in your peripheral. I think that's an interesting idea. I don't know. Maybe they can't manifest completely into our dimension, that's why they're always blacked out. That's true. They never fully load. (laughs) That's right, yeah. I don't think they're aliens, but they could be, they really could be. I don't buy that. No, the alien, you're the alien guru. So. I wouldn't, I don't buy that. No, I think aliens are... He says, unbelievable. <laughs> no, I, I could buy that aliens are also another type of interdimensional thing. But I think, like you said, they, they finish their loading screen. They go the whole way. Yeah. Okay, well, I, this will not be our last shadow figure episode. No, you've got and, a whole episode planned for him one day. Yeah, well, Hat Man specifically. Yeah. Like this, and, and maybe... I figure if this was the hat man that Georgie would have made a note to say that it had the hat Mm -hmm. and she didn't. So maybe that was left out, but I'm going to assume from this point forward and in the past 40 minutes that this is not about the hat man. All right. So let's, let's jump into the discussion discussion and talk about what we think of this experience. Yes. Okay. I have two questions for you. What are they? One Do you think that there is a relationship between the markings in the closet and the scratches and what they're experiencing? Because it's almost, if this is like a a movie, you would assume yes. But this is the real world. There, you know, things happen. And two, do you think that it's a coincidence that who they, she had the dream of was the same entity that they were seeing in the apartment? And I would prefer you answer them in order. Okay, so the first one, I feel like the symbols and the drag marks feel like they put a lot of bad ne- negative energy out, and it seems kind of like a portal has opened around that energy. Not necessarily a bad or a good portal, but it feels like there's some kind of portal. Like or maybe opening. they did summon something. Yeah. I, I will be mm-hmm. the first to say that I don't know enough about that stuff. I don't... See, okay, see, I don't think so. I don't think they summoned something. I think, I think it probably was an accidental thing like kids broke into the apartment maybe they're gang members i don't know i don't think there was like a murder there i don't know the stain marks could be that's weird to me i didn't get a color either like i don't know if it's blood or you know somebody 
poured some coke. I I was gonna say bleach. But oh, to clean up the blood or the right. coke. <laughs> right. Coca-Cola. I don't know. They were cleaning pennies and stuff. I don't know, man. Like I, it feels like there's that for me. What I'm gathering from that information, it feels like there's probably some kind of portal open. I don't think it was like a summoning, because because like a summoning would bring like a demon and it would attach to one of the summoners, right? Yeah, people don't really summon shadow people, do they? Not on purpose. Yeah. So you think something negative or bad happened there, or with bad intention? And that kind of drew the shadow figure there. Yeah, or multiple entities, and that's how they're manifesting. Okay. It, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because we, we'll we never know that. All that's we can true. really speak to is what she experienced. Absolutely. So, question two. Dream man trying to take her away and entity in the apartment. Do you think they're one and the same, or do you think it's a coincidence? I think there's no coincidence there. So you think it's the same? Yeah, well, okay. So, so we're, kids... we're dealing with a Freddy Krueger then. <laughs> well, a Freddy okay, Krueger, so bitch. Kids can see things, those, those kinds of things better, right? Yeah. That's and, the theory. And, and the innocence in it too. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, oh, he just wants to take me to the away for a while. They're at a fair. He was probably yeah. going to get her some cotton candy. And it, it was a guy in the dream. So it's more of a fully realized manifestation. I wonder if she can remember what the person's face was like. I would doubt it. I would. I mean, yeah, this was uh, 15 years ago. It would be interesting if she if she did, because obviously in the real world, they're only seeing a shadow. So if she could see the face of it mm-hmm. in her dreams, that would have been interesting. But she didn't say either way. But who who knows what she where she was even looking like she could have been looking down. She could have been looking around. That's true. But that, so yeah, you think I it's, think it's connected. Yeah, I for sure think it's connected. So let me ask you a third question. Then okay. This is just a quiz. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm kind of going off. I was like, are you paying attention <laughs> when, I'm li- when I'm reading and speaking? And you have been, so I appreciate that. Is Georgie a casualty by just being close? Or do you think that it's attached to both of them? Because I definitely think it's attached to her dad. Yeah. It's just a matter of if it's like everyone or just him. And she just is kind of in a bad spot being around him. My initial thought was that it was just the dad and she was a casualty. But as the story progressed, it felt like... Kind of shifted to her. Yeah. It went to a room. Not an easy spot. It was in her dreams. It was giving her that Indian rug burn. Yeah. It felt like started with the dad, found something easier. Yeah. That's how it felt. Like, okay, it's 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 coming into the world, it's sucking energy out, and it found an easier source. Yeah. Or a less suspecting source. Yes, more innocent for sure. Yeah. It's just like it's interesting. And I wonder if her dad was the first one to hear the whisperings and the markings were in his bedroom. I wonder if that's just chance. Like it was going to initially attach to whoever was in that room, or I wonder if he did something or if he I mean, who knows what state of mind he's in. Like we're getting the perspective I mean now she's older. Mm Mm-hmm. And she wrote it to us at her current age. But still, like, the person that experienced it at the time was seven years old. Like, between work, family life, like, who knows what kind of stress and and feelings and mental state her dad was in. And I don't mean that. I mean, he could have been the happiest of his life. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying maybe there was, like, some type of negativity that he was feeling based on anything that could have been happening in life that it just so happened that it was drawn him. You know what freaks me, though? There are exceptions to this rule, but typically... Demons are people, ghosts are houses or property. That's true. You did mention that when we were talking about something. <laughs> Man, what what were we talking about? Is that Bobby Mackey's? No, it was after that. It was a listener submission where we oh, were talking about attachment. That was the oh, recent the, one. The ghost in the desert. Yeah. It, yeah, the ghost in the desert. Because mm-hmm. we thought it was more of a house attachment than to... Uh, Soraya. That's true. But I don't... That, see, okay. So the personal attachment and the satanic markings make it fit with... The idea of it being maybe a demon. But I've never really considered shadow people to be fully demonic. But what do I know? Yeah, I don't know their rules. Yeah. They don't tell us. (laughs) Right. You can't plead ignorance just like a speed limit. Like, you just got to know. You just got to know. So, so where are you landing on this? Oh, believable. If the grandma is, like, into it, I'm into it. (laughs) That woman has my heart. You want me to try and put a good word in for you? I mean, I'm married. Okay. But I would love to meet her. Okay. I I agree. It's just like, these are the stories that I absolutely believe. And maybe it's, you know, repetitive with our listener submissions. But when you hear stuff like this, it's like, and four witnesses. I mean, I know the aunt wasn't really involved that much or the aunt. 
I guess some people say aunt. We say aunt around here. That's right. But a lot of witnesses, things breaking, marks on the body. It's, I buy it. I say believable. Yeah, believable. Two believables on the board. So that is our episode, The Los Angeles Shadow Figure. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, if you want your personal paranormal encounter told on the podcast, head to our website, believingthebizarre.com. Go to submit your experience. Fill out all the little questions on the form so that we can make it as detailed and as interesting an episode as possible without lying, please. And send it our way. And We're not going to know if you lie. Yeah. So it's kind of on you to yeah. not make us look like liars. Because if it, like if you tell us a bullshit story and we're like, oh, it sounds believable, and you're at home making fun of us, that's not cool. <laughs> that's not cool. Yeah, if you're going to give us a fake one, at least make it so entertaining and ridiculous that at the end of the episode, we're like, okay, okay, okay. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good time. That was a good, that was a good <laughs> ride. Yes. But thankfully, they've all been very serious and believable. I feel like there's just like... There's enough nuance and enough like mundane qualities. And it's like people are talking about their own families. I don't know. There's just like maybe I'm being arrogant when I say that I feel like I could detect a major BS story. Mm. Oh, no. no. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. Yeah, I feel like there'd be red, little red flags because they're I don't want to harp on it. But there have been we've had listener submissions in the past where I was like, mm, mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. but uh, not this one. Um, And if you are feeling the pod. Oh, God. Forgive me. Feeling the pod. Feeling the pod. <laughs> if you are into the, if you really want to help the podcast and you want to give us like a five star review, that would really help us grow and chart organically, which is really good for us. Yep. So if you, if you're listening on Apple, hit us up. Also quick teaser. We got a lot of, a lot of new content coming out shortly. So make sure you stay tuned for all that is exciting. It'll be dropping in April and we'll be excited to talk about that. So we're just, we're just, uh, just preparing it for you now. Yeah. April is a big month for us. Big, big month. But anyway, thank you so much for listening. And as always, I'm Tyler. I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. The podcast is bizarre as you are.